Recently, LeicaRumors.com unveiled the Leica M11D. Leica's attempt to capture the hearts and imagination of shooting on film with the convenience of digital. This will be their third D camera. First, we had the 262, followed by the M10D, and now the M11D, which will be out later this year. Let's state the obvious, they, they obviously have some beef with the Fuji X100 series. Basically, the Leica D series is whatever flagship camera they're currently offering, but without a screen. And that does definitely like pique my curiosity and imagination, but when I look at what the camera is rumored to be, I can't help but think that maybe they're not going far enough into the film-like experience on a digital camera to capture my heart and imagination and to deal the ultimate death blow to the Fuji X100 series, I think Leica has to be brave. I think the current specs that I'm reading about, they're just too timid. So here are the 10 specs that the Leica M11D should have if Leica was brave enough to make this camera. Let's go. life, there is no pure black and there is no pure white. The same is true on film. There's no pure black and pure white on this thing. So why does this sensor have to give me pure black and pure white? If I want a real film-like experience, we got to limit the sensor. We've got to fade the blacks and clip the highlights. Then and only then will that sensor be more true to film. So I love the 61 megapixels. We can keep that part, but we got to limit the tonal range. Next up, we're talking about the meter because the Leica M11 has a multimeter, it has a spot meter, a center weighted meter, a highlight priority meter. I mean, look at you, you're just a computer with a lens. But over here, the M6, the epitome of film shooting on Leica, we just got that spot meter. I mean, really, you're perfect. You don't need any improvement. You're just great as you are. The M6 meter never lies. So of course the M11D has to have that same spot meter from the Leica film cameras. If not, if we get this multi-meter, this highlight meter, we're just digital. It's not the film experience. To get that ultimate film experience, you gotta limit the ISO. Like for instance, I've got a bunch of this Kodak Max Film 400, Portra 400, Cinestill 800, Ektar 100, T-Max, Tri-X, more Portras, more Cinestills. When you pick an ISO on a film camera, you're committed. That's it. You don't get to just change your ISO all willy-nilly in the middle of your shoot. You gotta commit. And for that reason, when you get the M11D, you should have to commit to 36 exposures on an ISO before you get to change it. That would be way more realistic to the film experience. Imagine that, you get your M11D, you set your ISO on the little dial on the back, and that is it. You have a little clicker in the bottom, kinda like the shutter count on the M6 tells you where you are in your exposures, and you can't change the ISO until you hit the 36 exposure. Now that would be a film-like experience. So you go out and you shoot and you send your roll off to get developed and then they take this roll that they develop and they start to scan it. They send it back to you. You get that email, that scan day email that we all love from the lab of your choice. Maybe you got it on JPEG, but you didn't get it on RAW. But if you really cared about your film, you got it on TIFF. That's right. The M11D must be TIFF only. It doesn't shoot RAW, it doesn't shoot JPEG, it shoots TIFF. That is the king of formats. That is the only format worthy of a Leica camera. A 
Okay, next up, I kind of mentioned this before, but it's definitely one of our points. You get 36 shots on the M11D. That's it. You get 36 before you have to make a change. Now, you're shooting at 61 megapixels in TIFF. And every single photo, a 61 megapixel uncompressed tip is gonna come out to 361 megabytes per file. That's a pretty big file. Now, I'm sure you're aware Leica has been moving to internal storage for their cameras, so the M11D must have internal storage. However, they've got to create a custom chip with that German engineering that limits that data to only 13 gigabytes. Not 16, this isn't Apple, a 13 gigabyte chip internal storage so that we only get those 36 TIFF files. And if Leica was really brave, they would only do nine gigabytes and only give us 24 files. We'll kick it real old school there. So we've already established that we are limiting this camera to 13 gigabytes with 36 shots. Now it's time to get those files off the camera and onto your phone. You'll do this of course in the Leica Photos app. So you'll open the app and you'll sync your camera to the app and it's time to get the photos. But to get those photos off your camera is a $10 in-app purchase. No different than if you were to send a roll of film off to your favorite lab and tell them, develop only. You're gonna spend 10 bucks, so why not put it as an in-app purchase? You wanna transfer these files from the M11D to your phone, 10 bucks, right there. And you can begin the process to transfer those files from your camera to your phone. But that said, we're not quite done with this one yet. There are some popular photo apps out there that let you take a photo, but you gotta wait as it digitally develops so that you can see it. Now that's fine and all, and it's kind of gimmicky. I think Leica should up it a little bit. And rather than making us digitally wait, let's just throttle the transfer. You wanna get those files from the M11D over to your phone? There's got to be a data cap at the rate in which it transfers. If you were to take a roll of film and develop it, you're gonna spend three and a half minutes on the developer, eight and a half minutes on the Blix. You're gonna wash it, then you're gonna stabilize it, and then you gotta let it dry for two hours. Now I did the math and I added it up, and it comes out to two hours, 15 minutes, and 30 seconds to transfer your files from the M11D over to your phone. That only seems reasonable and more true to the film experience. And black and white, it's a little shorter. When Leica released the Q3, they also released this feature in the Leica Photos app called Leica Looks. Why it's not on the M11 is beyond me, but it's definitely there for the Q3 and for the new SL3. These Leica Looks are looks you can put onto your JPEGs and give yourself an edit already in camera when you shoot. We are primed up for the film experience here because just like Fuji has the recipes, we at Leica have the Leica Looks. But here's the thing. You want a true film-like experience? That Leica look must be pre-selected and pre-loaded and it'll cost you anywhere between $10 and $30 per look to load up to get your 36 shots. So again, we're limited to 36, we preset our ISO and we buy a Leica look to load up onto our cameras for those 36 shots. And when we're done, the counter resets again. And if you want, you can buy another look for your next 36, change your ISO, do whatever you want, but you gotta hit that in-app purchase again and pick up a Leica look. And here's the thing, prices go up every single year. Okay, this one I'm really excited about because if I take my M6 and I go out on a shoot and I'm banging it around, I'm not taking good care of my camera, I'm hitting it on rocks or hitting it on walls, eventually I'm gonna break something and light is going to get into this beautiful black box. And when that happens, I have a camera with a light leak. The M11D should have a sensor inside the camera that if you slam it around too much, you're gonna get a digital light leak. And you're like, oh, that's cool. I've got apps that do that. That's a cool effect. No, 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 no. You get this digital light leak and it's on everything. It does not leave. It's not random. It's gonna appear and it's not gonna go away until you hop on the Leica Photos app and you do a in-app purchase for $300 for a digital CLA. 
When you do that, the camera will reset, the sensor will reset, and you can start banging it around again from square one. It only seems reasonable to put a sensor in the camera, more true to the film experience. Okay, next up for those that like to travel, you know what it's like to get to the airport and you gotta pull out your bag of film and say, can you please hand check this, sir? The Leica M11D should be no different. You should go to TSA. You cannot put the Leica M11 through the airport scanners. You have to have that camera hand checked. Now they might be weirded out because you're handing them a camera, but they're just doing their job. So we're gonna let them do their job. The M11D must be hand checked and cannot go through a TSA scanner or any scanner for that matter, period. Final thing on our list today is that Leica with the M11D must partner with Clever Supply to include a Joe Greer short strap on every single M11D. That's right, the Joe Greer short strap is the epitome of straps. I have mine right here on my Leica M6 and it is perfect in every single way. I got this so I could wear two cameras at once. Look at this. I can walk around with a top and a bottom and I'm good to go. The Joe Greer short strap will come in black though for the Leica M11D release to make sure we are on brand for Leica because they always include a black strap. Beautiful strap, will age so well and give you many, many years of wonderful photography with your M11D. And if you're interested in products from Clever Supply, be sure to go to the link below, use the code Herring and you'll get 10% off any purchase except the Joe Greer short strap. I think we can all agree that if Leica was to make the M11D as I have described it in this video, it would destroy the Fujifilm X106, much like how Marty McFly destroyed all of Biff Tannen's hopes and dreams and wealth in Back to the Future, which is where the M11D really longs to go. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a sub, like this video, drop a comment below, and let me know which one of these things was your favorite. Hope you guys enjoyed this, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh,